Yo, what's good? What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast with Prodigy. Y'all already know who I am, Prodigy, your host with the most. Hey, before we get started, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. We love it when you guys interact with us. Come on, just help us out a little bit. Tell if something sucks. Tell if something is cool, you know. Help us out a little bit. But uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, also, before we start, I don't know, for y'all that watch on YouTube, uh, set my look a little different right now. We got a little bit more chill vibe. I'm kind of hyped about it. These chairs are pretty comfy, you know, go lie. Forget the office chairs that we had before, no lie. And we got the three cameras pointing right here, right here, right here, up in the production for you guys real quick. So uh, yeah, expect more out of us. But other than that, I would like to introduce my guest right here, going by the name Baby Youngin. What up, what up, man? How hey. you doing today? How you doing today, Chilling, bro? chilling. How about you, bro? Smooth, smooth. Yeah, yeah. I had a long drive. Traffic was kind of crazy the way up here, but... Yeah? Mm-hmm. Where, where'd you come from? Uh, I'm coming from, like, Huntington Beach. Oh, like shit, Orange for County. Real? Yeah, it ain't that bad. It was, it was like, an hour. Ah, uh, yeah, with that traffic around this time on the 91, it get too hectic. Yeah, 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 I've been out here, like, what, three years? L.A. traffic is not... <laughs> uh... Nothing to play about. It. Nobody likes it. You just got to deal with it. You said that motherfucker. 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Minimum. For sure. Anywhere. Just to get to the next city. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get to the next store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, if people who have watched this or listened to the podcast before, they pretty much have a gist of how I go about this stuff. Uh, I want to get into talking about your music and what you're doing right now and stuff. But before we do that, I want to get in and learn a little bit more about you and your personal life and stuff like that. I feel like rappers and artists and stuff, people just try to get like beef and, you know, arguments and what's, you know, they're hyped about. Uh, what's, you know, what's hype about them right now. But I want to get to learn about you. So real quick, just uh, in general, just give me like a rundown uh, of who you are, what you do in the music industry and stuff like that. Uh, my name is Baby Youngin. Professionally, uh, I'm 21 years old. I come from Dallas, Texas. I'm a singer, songwriter, rapper, all that. So, you know, I could. I want to dive into acting and whatnot. Got a couple, couple director homies and hit my line. They already know what's up. But uh, yeah, for the most part, that's what I do. I've been making music. It's 2023. I'm coming on a four years. So sure. shit, it's been a minute now. It's coming on to a minute now. We've been working. We've been working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you say you from you from uh you from Texas? Tell me a little bit about that. Growing up in Texas as like a youngin. Um, uh, Dallas. I feel like it's. I feel like it, it's. I, everywhere is rough. You feel me? But I feel like out there, it's more unorganized. I feel like it's it's rough. If you grow up in a poor area, you don't have much. Same thing. Uh, my parents worked a lot. My mom was in and out. Same thing. Same thing to the day. Honestly, I'm trying to get still rich. Trying to get trying to get them right. You know. Yep. Uh, shit. Daddy was in and out as well. You feel me? Just work, work, work. So I grew up. I grew up. I feel like mostly by myself on some shit. Like uh, I didn't really have a lot of homies till like sophomore year high school on some shit. I used to get beat up all the time in middle school on some shit because I used to mm. I used to be alone all the time, bro. So I used I learned like how to take ass beating by myself on some shit. Like middle school was tough. They beat me up in the locker rooms before practice, after practice because I was playing football. Uh, like at lunch on some, on, you know, just trying to be funny shit, trying to be bullying and shit back back then. It was stupid, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but shit, I just grew up hard body man. I feel like I grew up by myself on. For the most part, I mean, like I went through a lot of shit growing up. Mm. I feel like the typical on some shit, like I don't want to make it like no sad story. You feel me? But <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I get it. So, uh, what was what was your parents uh, doing for work that was having them in and out? Uh, my mom cleans houses a lot. Uh, she's always did that. She's always been a housekeeper. To be honest, I'm not ashamed of that. She's always put food on the table. Same thing with my mm-hmm. dad. My dad uh, worked construction. He's worked oil fields. He's been a fucking tow truck driver. He's been a fucking semi driver. My dad's been everything, honestly. Uh, but shit, I used to move around a lot too growing up. Excuse me, I just had a shake. Um, <laughs> I used to move around a lot growing up, um, like city to city. I lived in Dallas up until like 
like fifth grade. Then they moved me to like outer towns in East Texas, like Carthage, Wharton, uh, which are like country towns, but shit. Like the country out there still get down on some shit. Like you feel me? Like you don't gotta be in the city to get for it to get dangerous, especially in the country out there, like ain't no cameras, ain't nothing. The schools, schools that all the kids out there be fighting everybody. That should be tough, you feel me? Um so we were just moving around a lot. Yeah. We're moving around a lot. Yeah. You said you was uh you was getting beaten up before practice for football and stuff like that. So how how long or like when did you get into like playing sports or specifically like football? Probably like honestly seventh grade when I could play in school because I didn't. I'm uncultured in a lot of stuff, bro. Like, well, growing up, I feel like I caught game, I caught wind of everything now. Now that I'm older and whatnot, but growing up, I was uncultured, uncultured about a lot of stuff. Like I didn't know, um, like about football. I didn't know about hip hop. I didn't know about like American music. All I knew was like. To be honest, how to be Mexican on some shit. Like, as funny as that sounds. <laughs> as funny as that sounds. Like, all I heard was Spanish music, gave food at home, because it was rare when, we, when we'd eat out, too, on some shit. You feel me? Like, so, I don't know. I just got, I just got hit whenever I went to school. I feel like that's where I learned everything that I learned. You feel me? Whenever I went outside after school, all that type, type of stuff, I learned on my own. Of course, like, middle school, seventh, eighth grade. Yeah. After, yeah, I feel like that's like uh, middle school is for sure like a, a turning point for most people. <laughs> I know I learned and saw a whole bunch of random crazy shit for the first time once I got into middle school. First time, six like, cause I don't. Well, how is it for you over there? Like, is sixth grade a part of middle school for y'all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so, uh, sixth grade starts middle school. Mm. I don't know if out here fifth grade is middle school, but no, I, it's fifth, fifth grade for sure is not middle school here. It's like some schools. My school, um. I was in elementary till sixth grade, so I had middle school just seventh and eighth grade, and some like weird shit. But that's only some schools. That's why yeah, I asked yeah. it. Feel I feel me? like I had heard of that too, like out there too. And some shit. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that middle school vibe is definitely like it's that training for high school. So you see some training for real life. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers be going into their puberty and shit, be feeling ballsy and shit. Like, shit is survival of the fittest. Yeah. So uh, you said you was, like, in middle school, you was getting beat up and stuff like that. Was that, like, happening often to a lot of people, or was there, like, crazier shit going down? Because I know people, like, these rappers be telling me over here in, like, school in L.A., they already getting stabbed in middle school. Um, I mean, we had people bring guns to school and shit and threaten shit, but I ain't, I ain't really had no, no shit go down like that where somebody got stabbed in school or some shit happened like that. Like, there's been occasions where, like, there's been brawls and shit where, like, even the... The principal jumped in. They threw a, <laughs> they threw a burrito at that. Nigga. Like that shit. That shit got down. Fool, you feel me? <laughs> uh, there's been like brawls and shit. There's been like, I, there's been like bad ass beatings, but nah, there's never been nobody that like got stabbed or shot. At least not in school or nothing. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Yeah. L. A. Just a little wild with it, I guess. Bigger city. Shit, Stabbing people are like, school. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> we had metal detectors though, bro. Like we couldn't we couldn't take no shit to school. Like if. You snuck some shit into school is because you snuck in like after hours or because they were coming into school like before school started. Every door had metal detectors on some shit. I don't know. Oh, I don't know if that's a thing out here. You feel me? But shit, not the schools I've been going yeah, to. Nah, so. we had out there. We got metal detectors ever since shit. Even in middle school, we had metal detectors. To be honest, now that I think about it, like seventh, sixth grade, the motherfuckers had metal detectors in high school. Damn. I mean, in middle school, but that shit was. That's crazy. I don't even, I've never even heard of that before. <laughs> not at not at school. Nah, but that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's why they stabbing people out here. <laughs> uh, yeah, for real. So, uh, was sports ever like a like a thing you wanted to like take seriously, or it was just like something there that you was doing? I wanted to take it serious. I had camp invites like in tenth grade and shit. Like, I stopped playing football in tenth grade, bro, because I got in trouble. I started digging more into the streets, like getting more and more angry. You feel me? Like, yeah. I really got kicked off the football team. I fought my football coach. Because his ass, he really told me I was going to miss out one quarter because I missed one day of practice. And I, and I told him I was going to miss practice because my little brother had just been born. And he was like, he had to be like four or five months, bro. He wasn't even like, oh, you feel me? And my mom had to go to an appointment because she had just had him. So you feel me? She was like, can you take care of him? Whoop-de-whoop. So I, I'm taking, I tell him I'm, I'm not going to make practice. I got to take care of him. 
he tell me, okay, you gonna miss one quarter. So then game day come by. Mind you, I'm supposed to be starting. Uh, first quarter go by nothing. Second quarter go by nothing. So it's halftime. Third quarter go by nothing. By then I'm mad, so I get down on my knee when fourth quarter starts. I'm down on my knee when fourth quarter starts. We're getting blown out. I don't give a fuck. You feel me? We, you feel me? Coach was tripping. I was, if we were starting, maybe we wouldn't have been blown blown out. Uh, but by the fourth quarter, I guess he was mad because we were getting blown out or some shit. Cause he was like started tripping on me because I was on my knee. He told me, get up or I'm not going to play. So I started tripping on that fool too. Like, what you mean? I'm not going to play. Like, it's a two-minute warning in the fourth quarter. What the <laughs> fuck is, like, what am I What am I going to play? And I told him that, but it, I guess that rubbed him the wrong way too because we was already losing. So Mans came over there. He grabbed it, like, in front of everybody. Bro, I'm talking about my family was there. Everybody, everybody family was there. My teammates, everybody. This man going to grab me from the sidelines by my face mask and, like, yank me up by my face mask. And that shit, like, honestly, like... It, as a teenager, because I can't even say as a man, because I wasn't no man at the time, you feel me? But as a teenager, that shit pissed me off. I wasn't going to let him, like, grab me like that, and especially in front of everybody. So I, like, I shoved his ass in front of, like, everybody during the football game, <laughs> like, for real. And then right there on the sidelines, all my all my teammates just, like, surrounding me, like, yo, chill, 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 chill. Like, what you were like? And I'm just like, nah, the fool, this fool's tripping. And then he was like, he was like, you're you're off the team, like woody woo, and I'm like, bro, I don't give a fuck. Like, I, you think I was gonna stay regardless after this? <laughs> Damn. You feel me, like, so I stopped in tenth grade. I played soccer growing up, but I never took that shit serious. Even though I love that shit now, I'm like, I don't know, I'm weird fool. Like, I didn't like that shit growing up, but now I like that shit. Like, I thought it was boring back then, but now that shit really love. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like certain certain shit grows on you from like a kid. So when you're adult, because you just, like, understand it more, you know, like, whether it be, like, the work you put in or, like, damn, it's like, that one move is low-key hard as hell, but it looks easy because these fools are just too good at it. You know? shit. Yeah, you just have a little bit more appreciation for it. So, uh, when would you say was, like, uh, your uh, interest in music, like, peaked and you wanted to, like, start to get, like, into it? Because you said you weren't even really, like, into any other type of like hip hop or rap or anything like that until you was like in middle school. So when did you start getting more into like hip hop? Mm, like 10th grade on the cool when I found out about Young Boy. And that's when I started listening to hip hop. Like a lot of the homies started putting me on in school because I didn't know about shit like that. I was wearing motherfucking like K Swiss and all this weak <laughs> school. You feel me? Like I didn't know about nothing fool. Like so they just full started putting me on hip hop because I, 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 shit, I'm not even embarrassed. I still listen to motherfucking Bruno Mars, Billy Eilish, all the beautiful ass shit. You feel me? Uh, but I don't know. Like they, they, you can't play that on the speaker. You feel me? If you hanging out with the, <laughs> with the homies, so yeah. shit. They started putting me on some like hip hop and shit. I found out about Young Boy, about a lot of shit. And honestly, I've always sang like even. Even in sixth, seventh grade, bro, I was in choir in school. Uh, so I was, like, singing and whatnot already. So in class, I was singing. Like, some people would tell me, shut up. Some people would tell me, like, sing for them. They record me and shit, all this shit. But, uh, like, the homies all, all told me, like, shit, you you want to sing? Like, sing. Like, we'll pitch in for a studio. And we pitched all, we all pitched in for a studio. To be honest, I was only into hip-hop probably for, like, a year, bro. And that's crazy because I think that's like the first time that I really sit here and I think about that shit that I was like probably into hip hop for about a year until I started rapping, bro. Damn. Uh, cause when you say you're into hip hop, you mean like you listened to it at that time? Yeah, like I, I like I started listening to it like barely for like about a year, a year and some change, and then I like start like got into a booth and did it myself, you know. Uh, like, oh. Yeah. Damn. Well, so we're like your homies. Were they already trying to like get in the rap game? Were they already trying to make their own tracks and stuff? That's why they was hitting you up to go to the studio. Or they just like saw it in you. Nah, they, I feel like they saw it in me because none of them fools, none of them fools rap or do nothing. You feel me? Like they, they be doing their own shit. We, I got a lot of a lot of street homies, a lot of homies that you know. So to, to be like, not e it's not even in a fucked up way because my dog just told me it like two weeks ago on some shit because he, he got a kid on the way and anything. And then I got a, another homie who be going through some shit. And then a lot of my homies is locked up. A lot of my homies is dead. So my homie, like, really, like, broke it to me on some shit. Like, a lot of us that really grew up together that I, I was, like, 
they saw that I was like one of the only ones that could really like make it out of the situation that we were in and they wanted to push that shit and I really appreciated that shit. Mm-hmm. You know? Cause he, he never told me that back then, but now that we're grown, they tell me that shit and I'm like, that's some real shit on some shit. Yeah. So, uh, nah, I fool, nobody was rapping around me. Nobody was doing nothing. I just used to sing, but you know, I couldn't, I couldn't be a singer. I can't sing like Adele. I can't sing like Bruno Mars, but they told me harmonize some shit. So, I don't know. I just started started getting influenced by Young Boy, by J D Young, and by a lot of like southern music. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. I, I I checked out some of your music. I was like, oh, this fool, this fool was reminding. I didn't want to like be rude and say like the wrong type of artist, but it, to me, it was like, damn, this fool kind of like has the vibe of like J D Young or like some raw wave type of shit. Yeah, yeah. I went on tour with raw wave for a little bit before COVID hit. Damn, that shit was live. Hell yeah. So h- tell me about that uh, that first studio session you had that you and all your homies pitched in. Like how how was the vibe for it? What 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 you guys like go through? You finish a track? <laughs> just like fuck I finished a it. song. I think I was into like two hours only. To be honest, so that was honestly really good. But I had already took everything written on some shit. Like mm-hmm. I would write poetry. Like English was my best subject in school, so I was already good at writing poems and all this shit. So I had already took a song written. I had the beat chosen already. I, I, I knew I knew what I was gonna go in there and do, and I felt like on some shit I one taked it. My my first song ain't that good. I did one take that motherfucker, um, but the engineer was just like, like bro, like you hard, like you hard for a fat Mexican. Like I, ain't, you know, he was, I grew up with a, I grew up with a lot of black people and shit. You feel me out there? So, bro, bro was like, bro, you hard for a fat Mexican, bro. Like I ain't never heard you rap like that. You rap like a nigga. On some shit. Like, he just said it like that. I'm like, damn. I'm like, I appreciate that. I know how to take that shit. You feel me? <laughs> I told him I appreciate that. And then he told me, like, nah, bro, on some shit, you got to keep going, bro. Like, I've never heard no shit like you. Like, I've never seen no shit like you. Like, you got you got some shit, bro. If you keep practicing, if you keep coming to the studio, uh, like, you, you going to have something, bro. Just keep doing this shit. I promise you. And shit. That was, uh, that was my boy Triple C. He came with a Q. I still fuck with gang and shit out there in Dallas. Shit, that that shit meant a lot to me too. Like, early in my career, like, people wasn't telling me, man, that shit ass, that shit, quit that shit. Like, nah, they was, they was pushing me on that shit. So I appreciate that shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard. So you had that motivation, like, from your first time, especially after doing it, after, like, one take, that shit got to feel real good. Yeah, yeah, bro. I ain't know, I ain't know music was going to take me this far, you feel me? Shit, I just know I wanted to be something. I hated working. For real. I feel that. So, uh, how long after, like, that studio session? Because obviously, you know, just doing it one time, you weren't, like, uh, like you just said, you weren't expecting it to take you as far as, like, you did and stuff like that. How long after that first, like, session and everybody telling you, you know, they, they fuck with, like, your voice, they fuck with what you're doing and what you, like, you could do? How long after that was it, like, you're like, damn, like, I want to, like, really try with this, like, you know, try to put real effort into it. I feel like from the jump, I feel like I, I put, uh, like, I was out to get it, bro. I don't feel like I ever, like, went stagnant. The times that I went stagnant was, like, uh, on some monetary reasons, like, times I couldn't afford the studio or times I couldn't mm-hmm. afford a video shoot. But since I started this music shit, I feel like I've had, I've had my mind on this. Even when I was working, I would put my, I would, like, go draw on my checks because I would drop them on my music shit, on my studio, on all that. Like, music, music's music been first and foremost in my life, and I knew that that was something that I wanted it to get me ahead. So I've taken it serious from the jump. Yeah, I asked that because I know a lot of a lot of uh, people that I've interviewed, They their stories are like, oh, I grew up just around, like, I grew up around the gang shit, and then I, I, you know, I fuck with rapping and stuff like that. Me and my homies would just like get drunk, we would rap, and then yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and then so right. they start off with that, but then like usually what they tell me is like, oh, like my auntie or like my brother had told me like, yo, like bro, keep doing that, like it's gonna make you out the hood, or it'll be like a tragic event that happened to them and stuff like that, like. You know, they're doing it for somebody to prove a point to themselves or whatever. Hell yeah, yeah. No, I feel like even me, like, as a person, I've been through a lot in life, bro. Like, you know, like I say, I've lost a lot of people too, shit. R.I.P. <laughs> J.D., Brandon, Marlo, Loaded, Alex. 
I just sit here and motherfucker write a list. <laughs> feel me? But I feel like I do do it for a lot of people at the same time. Like a lot of the people that did pass away from them, like, let's say like Loaded and Marlo who were on their way to be like successful rappers. Uh, like they gave me motivation and they told me that I got something. You feel me? So shit. I do it for a lot. Of, I do it for a lot of people. I do it for my mama. I don't, I feel like I don't even do this shit for me, cause I don't I don't give a, I don't know I don't know what the word selfless, cause I don't really give a fuck about myself on some shit. Like I I put other people first on some shit, and as sad as that sounds, like I I really break myself over people on some shit, and I don't know. Maybe that's a habit that I gotta fix. Maybe that's a curse. I don't know what the fuck it is, but shit. At the end of the day, I know that I'm living for other people on some shit, <laughs> not even for myself. So I, I know I do this music shit for, for the fam, for the for the guys that are no longer here, for the guys that are incarcerated, for my mama, for my girl, for everybody. Yeah, and shit that, mean a lot. And that, that shit tight, cause when you put in out music, that, that that shit lives forever. Yeah, you know, like Tupac, yeah. Biggie, all them, they songs still play. On some shit. They, they they gone, but they still got all that memories. They got all them videos and stuff like that. I think that's what's tight about music. It just like, it don't go away. It's not like a. Like an art project or some shit like that. On some shit. Hey, yeah, that's that's the beautiful thing about it. I feel like, like, shit. God forbid the dead tomorrow. Nigga ain't here no more. Like, people can still hear the stuff that I put out. People can still hear the emotions and the lessons that I put out in the world. And they'll, they'll hopefully take something from me. You feel me? Yeah. So, shit. So I want I want to get uh, more uh, more into, like, uh, your music and, like, uh, your motivation, your thoughts uh, when you uh, make a track. Um I want to first ask you, you said you uh, write poetry. You like to write, write poetry and stuff like that, or used to. So I want to know is, like, nowadays, do you find yourself still writing your lyrics more, or do you freestyle it, uh, add freestyles into it a little bit more? Uh, more so 50-50. I don't tend to write the whole song no more like I used to, and I feel like maybe I need to sit down and do that so I can find myself, like, on the track for real, for real. Because I tend to, like, write half the song or I start the song and then I, like, freestyle. And don't get me wrong, this shit sound dope as shit, but sometimes I get off character or I get off, like, topic or some shit like that. Like, you know, I start rapping about random shit. Like, maybe I just need to dig back and actually write a whole motherfucking song. I, th I think it could go both ways because, like, when you're writing something, that's what you're really thinking about. You know, that's what you're really feeling about in that moment. But also when you're freestyling, that's, like, the real you coming out, you know? What you yeah. thinking about, like, in a split in second. In the moment, yeah. So I, th I think it's cool to do both. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a rapper, so I don't no, know. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Shit. I feel like that's why I do mix it sometimes, too, you know? Like, I get myself in the vibe. I either fucking take a dab or I fucking take a shot. Get right. Yeah. Start feeling the motherfucking... Start feeling the warm. Start tunnel visioning and shit, you know? Yeah. Feeling it. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, I wanted to ask you, when you be, like, doing studio sessions and stuff like that, because I noticed uh, whenever I interview people, they usually come with, like, a, a little team or a little crowd and stuff like that. You came over here by yourself. I wanted to know if, like, you go to a studio session, it's just, like, you and the uh, engineer or you and the producer making beats, or you bring other people with it to, like, bring a vibe? Uh, uh, it's 50-50. For the most part, I'll be by myself. I'll be by myself. I'll be by my girl uh, everywhere, to be honest, like, Shit to the store, to the studio, to the hood, anywhere, you feel me? Like, I feel like that brings first and foremost respect to anybody that I'm meeting and anywhere that I'm going on some shit. Like, I don't, like, like I told you, I don't care about myself. As funny as that sounds, I'm not scared to die on some shit. Like, I've been through a lot of situations. <laughs> so, uh, like, pulling up to the to an unknown hood because bro told me pull up to the hood and shoot a video you feel me? If I'm not getting no negative vibe off the text message or I'm not getting no weird vibe pulling up to there, I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull up and I'm going to be dolo. I'm going to say what's up, all this shit, because that brings, that brings like, respect, I feel like. You feel me? Like, people see you different and shit like that. I don't, I've never been like that. Like I say, like, I grew up by myself. I've never needed a hundred people around me, but believe me, I got a hundred motherfuckers that will do some shit over me. You feel me? Like, yeah, but shit. My people know what's up, and everybody know what's up. Everybody I ever met, I keep it respectful shit. Mm. shit. If anybody ever do some shit to me, them niggas hoes, them niggas hating. 
I don't do nothing to nobody. You feel me? I don't I don't come with fucked up energy towards nobody. So you feel me? I feel like I'm right with myself. I feel like I'm right with God. And hey, like I say, shit, as long as I'm good with my family, I'm straight. Yeah, that's how that's how it should be. <laughs> uh, uh I wanna ask you this now. Um in your songs, do you find yourself um how do I say this? Do you find yourself rapping or, you know, singing more about like Love, emotions, and stuff like that, or some more like gangster street shit. <laughs> I feel like more so about like love and hustling on some shit. Like I don't, I try to stay away from like all that murder, murder, kill shit. Sometimes I do it, but um, that really ain't me on some shit. Like I don't really want to rap about murder, murder, kill, kill, because I feel like that. Like my soul don't really come out into that. You feel me? Like, my soul comes from fucking, I don't know, beautifulness, pureness. Like, making some shit that people can vibe to, something people can smoke to, make a girl fall in love to. Like, you hop in a car with your lady and you play a Baby Onion song and shit. Like, on some shit. Like, you dedicate that hoe to her and she ends up fucking with that hoe. Like, like me, shit. I fell in love with my girl with to a YFN Lucci documentary that shit is dope <laughs> as shit you feel me like so shit that's that's why i do it on some shit yeah that's hard i fuck with it i fuck with it mm-hmm. that's why that's, that's why I, mean. uh, I did listen to a couple of songs and when you mentioned like oh jetty young and vibe i was like oh yeah i totally get that because that fool he be on his, he, or r.i.p to my boy that shit sucks yeah um, i cried the fool that was like one of the first, <laughs> no, i was wrong. like one of the rappers that sheesh and he actually cried over i was like damn because <laughs> I, I found out about it I, well, damn, why I sound like that? I found out about Jada Youngin when I was like in, uh, honestly, probably like a freshman fool. When I was a freshman, I was in my fucking bio- biology class, just bumping that nigga on my computer. Yeah. I took it from my bro, D Gray, from from one of my homies named Brandon. I saw him playing him on the computer on the cool, and then I'm like, damn, what the fuck you listening to? Because he had his headphones on, so I didn't even know what he was listening to. And I just like went and looked it up on YouTube and I started listening to that whole too. That shit is dope. So I ain't gonna lie. D great, I ain't never told you, but you put me on Jada Young and Fool. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Jade Jade is cool. And when you said that shit, I was like, yeah. I fuck with it, cause he be on his like his whole like twenty three shit. Mm-hmm. You know, like don't fuck with me. But like most of his songs are about like love and, you know, like passion and shit like that. He just got like he just had that grimy voice and that vibe around it too. But um uh, I want to get more into like you progressing in your music. So like, um, when was the first time that like you were able to hop on a feature or like get someone as a feature on your track? And how did that go down? Mm, I think one of my first biggest features. Honestly, my first big feature was Neff to Pharaoh. Uh, oh shit! Up in the Bay, um, we did some dope shit. He put me on his album Chang Season Two. Uh, I forgot what the fuck it was, the song was called. My bad. Mama say I think. Uh, shit. Honestly, him and Shooter Gang Coney just hit me up. Coney, Ginob- Ginobili, they just hit me up. Uh, like they were like, yo, your shit dope. Let's do like, let's do some shit and shit. They were true to their word. They just asked me for my number and they sent me over some songs and did them hoes. And next thing I knew, I was on his album. Uh, Sada Baby was also one of the first ones to tap in. I still fuck with bro to the day. Um, I feel like all my features, bro, are like off the strength on some shit. Like, oh shit, I don't know what I just did. Man. <laughs> uh, all my features are off the strength on some shit. Like, uh, you know, like just because people fuck with me on some shit, like, I, like your relations, which is a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Just like I told you, like you know, just being me, I feel like people ended up fucking with me, seeing what I do too, like on the internet, what I was doing. Cause when I got my first big check, I went and got my mama house, so I attracted like people like Young Blue, uh, just big, you know, like Grammy Grammy winning artists and shit, people yeah. with plaques. So that shit was like live to me. It's still unreal to me, cause on the cool when I to the day when I meet people, I get starstruck. I don't know if people could tell or not, but. Shit, that should be crazy to me. I went to the Grammys. I was starstruck. Like shit, like that is like crazy. You feel me? Like people ask me for a picture, I get starstruck. That should be crazy. Yeah. 
uh, I want to ask you like this because you you said all all those names. I know those names. Those are like pretty like well known names in like the rap industry, music industry, and stuff like that. Um, I want you to explain to me like and explain to like the listeners, the viewers, like realistically, like is it that hard to get noticed and you know um, hit up by uh, artists if you're making some noise, like. Because obviously you said that uh, Shooter Gang, they just hit you up, right? Ask for your number and stuff like that because they fuck with your music. Yeah. So, like, how how is, uh, deceiving is it for, like, someone to, like, try and, like, make it up in the game saying, like, oh, this person is too famous for me to, like, hit up and stuff like that? Shit. Honestly, you never know, bro. Because I feel like I've, I've always been somebody that's never been afraid to, like, reach out to people. I feel like a lot of people in the rap game are, like, egoistic I feel like they don't want to work with people they feel like they're the best mm-hmm. like I've heard a lot of stories like on some crazy shit uh, like, but I don't know I feel like it's never you know like if you feel like you're doing you obviously gotta have some motion you can't have like 2,000 followers trying to hit up Drake yeah. or some shit either, <laughs> you feel me like you gotta have to have dropped a song and it's going a little bit or maybe your song's hard you can shoot it over you feel me like you know when you got something hard bro you feel it I feel like you feel it. It's not like, damn, do well, they think this is hard because I think it's hard. Nah, you you gonna know when that shit's dope. So shit, I don't know. I feel like it's it's never it's never too early because I had like twenty thousand followers when all this like was going down. You know, like just be you, bro, and be cool. I feel like that like people can't beat that on on some G shit. Like if you're a good person, you're a good person, and people are gonna get attracted to you, gravitated towards you, and they're going to fuck with you, like, genuinely, not a, over money, not over this and that, because mm-hmm. that's why I've never paid nobody for a feature <coughs> either, because, shit, I pay a motherfucker for a feature, that fool's not even going to fuck with me afterwards. Not even, there's a, mo- there's a bunch of motherfuckers that paid big artists, paid a bunch of the homies that are bigger artists for songs, and they don't even follow them, they don't even... Fuck with them. They don't even repost it. They don't promo them. Just and it's like, a bag real quick. yeah, and that's, you feel me? Like, I don't know. I feel like it can't nothing beat being genuine. Like you money hungry people see that. If you clout chasing people see that. Yeah. Shit. When uh, when uh, you get like a feature for somebody and you do like and you, you ain't paying them and stuff like that. Um, in that situation, do like. People, like, they just, like, record the feature and send it to you, or are they, like, recording in the studio live with you? Mm, either or. If we're in the same city, we'll, we'll link in. But uh, people should, like, I got a Money Man verse. He sent it over. Uh, but with Skilla Baby, I was in the studio with Skilla Baby. Um, Sada Baby, he sent it over. Uh, I was in the studio with Money Sign Suede. Just like half and half, to be honest. Yeah. Like if we're in the same city, if we're in the same location. I feel like nobody's ever like tripped on having me around, which is what I appreciate too, because I don't have ties with nobody. Like I'm not signed to nobody, and nobody has an obligation to fuck with me. But and let's say like shit, like Money Man just came for rolling out. We were talking about it. I think I couldn't go for personal reasons, but shit, just stuff like that. Like you can pull up. Oh, he, he hit you up on it? Yeah, like yeah, shit like hard. that. Shit like that be dope. And it, I don't know. I appreciate shit like that. <laughs> yeah, for real. Shit, on, like you said just on some real genuine shit. They fucking yeah, with you yeah. more than just like your music type shit. Yeah, that's what I appreciate. That's what I that's what I want at the end of the day. I feel like motherfucking sharks going to eat me up in a water food, but I feel like all I've ever wanted in this motherfucking world, as lame as it sounds, was like real friends. Yeah. You feel me? Like, motherfuckers, they call me, I got them, and if I call them, they got me on some shit. You feel me? Like, yeah, 100%. I get that shit. Uh, uh, when I was checking out your music up on YouTube and stuff, I seen you got like a couple videos. A lot of them got like some nice views. You got like 50, 40, 60K views on them shits. I wanted to ask you, like, um, your opinion on like, um, uh, making music videos and filming it. You said you wanted to possibly get into acting in the future. Yeah. Shit, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but shit, I do want to do that. Like, I don't know, I just want to expand myself, you know? I feel like I want to be 
I want to be like a motherfucking. I don't know what you call it, like a free soul. I really even a free soul. But shit, when I shoot music videos, it'd be like, it's mostly running guns. I need to get a, I need to work on treatments, bro. On some G shit. I need to get on motherfucking planning out my videos, getting motherfucking background people, all that shit. Like, right. Yeah, shit. <laughs> let, let us know if y'all ever want us to, you know, do some exclusive behind the scenes with Foster's Boss. He's been a you know player in this game for a minute. If y'all would have heard what we were just talking about, y'all would have learned something real quick. But psych, y'all don't get that. But we're gonna get back into my boy right here. Um I forgot where we left off, so I just wanted to uh, talk about a few more things, ask you a couple more questions. Um, I wanted to ask you personally, what's your favorite um, of your own songs that you've put out, regardless of views, regardless of traffic and stuff like that, and then like give me the reason why. Uh, my favorite song by me, honestly, has to be called Moment. Moment. Moment means a lot to me, to be honest, because I wrote that motherfucker like my first trip to Miami uh, when I first got my first like little deal like two or three years ago um but shit i wrote that motherfucker when i went to miami and it just means a lot to me because it, it was my first trip out of state anywhere to be honest and i feel like i've told everybody the same story but i really changed my life around as far as like being in the streets being outside doing dumb shit like not taking anything serious when i like went out of state and i saw the beaches and i saw like the water, when I rode a motherfucking jet ski, all that shit, like, bro, I wrote them, I wrote Moment out there, and I shot the video out there, it's, uh, it just goes, I'm caught in the moment, mama, she proud, saying I'm chosen, I'm all about tokens, forever I'm thugging, so no, I ain't folding, it was just more so like, you know, I was just thinking, shit, I was in the moment, you feel me, and it was like, there's a lot of moments in life, you feel me, like, you got to appreciate when you're in the moment. And I feel like I honestly did appreciate when I was in that moment. So that song came out to be, like, one of my bigger hitters. Yeah. yeah people could feel the passion and emotion yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. hard. Uh, I had a deal with a company called Say La Vie down in Miami. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know what type of deal it was, to be honest. I don't, I don't wasn't no record deal and then it was like a deal to build me up to take me to a major from what I know of I don't know what that's called like a fucking Shopping. yeah like a producer deal. A, yeah I think it was like a producer deal um but shit it didn't end up working out on some personal on some personal shit like we just got like uh I signed for two years uh a year into the contract we got into like a personal like altercation, not like, not like physical or anything, but we like argued over the phone. And next thing I knew, like nobody answered my phone calls no more. The, the fucking assistants, the fucking label, no, like nobody. They treated me like I was, I don't know, like a fucking ex or something. You know, like like if I was trying to reach my girl or some shit. Like like what's going on? What's going on? But shit, like <sighs> once it got to, towards like two months of me trying to reach out, I like realized like yeah, these motherfuckers ain't going, fuck, ain't fucking with me. Uh, but shit, I don't know. I feel like it was on some G shit. Fuck it. I don't know. I feel like it was on some racist shit. I, I was like the only Mexican on the motherfucking label, fool. Uh, everybody else, they got YNW, Melly. They had King Vaughn. They had like Big Fish, motherfucking Raw Wave. Everybody, Fredo Bang. Like, so I wasn't over there fucking with no chumps or nothing either because they're like, they're like behind the scenes on some shit. But shit, I feel like, like the CEO is a Haitian. I don't know if they ever had no Mexicans ever dealt with no Mexicans, but I was definitely the only Mexican over there at the label. And I felt like I didn't get the same type of things that everybody else got as far as features, motherfucking hotel rooms. They put me in some shitty ass rooms, bro. Whenever I would travel, they would put me in some like fucking four by fours. Like I was staying in a cubicle or some shit. So there was, there was like a lot of, there was like a lot of times where I like, Really went out of pocket, and if I could, I don't have the same bank no more, but if I could go back to my statements on everything I love, I had to put up a good shit amount of money, like 10, easy 10, 15,000 just off of traveling a year alone, bro, because I would upgrade my rooms by my damn self. I was making so much money at the time. You feel me? Everything I did, I did it by myself. Uh, everybody was getting features at the time, fucking poo shiesty features, motherfucking... Big 30 features, fucking 
Braw Wave features, YNW Millie features, except Youngin. I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck's going on? You feel me? Like, I'm I'm asking, like, bro, I don't ask y'all for nothing. I don't, like, you feel me? Like, when I get my room, I, I, I'm not a diva, fool. Like, even with them, I was never a diva. Like, I didn't get what I wanted, but I would never cuss them out till they got to that one point, you know, where, like, like, what the fuck are y'all doing, bro? Like, like what's going on type shit? Like, I'm, I'm trying to get on and shit. I don't know. They just said fuck me at the end of the day, so... Shit, that's what it was. Damn. I didn't do nothing about it. I had to sit there like a year and wait till my fucking year till like my contract expired and then the terms afterwards had to expire too. So now I'm fully independent, but shit, I, I had like a whole year where I was still, bro, because I didn't want to drop music because everything I would have dropped was going to go to them. And they were being so petty, they didn't want to release me out of the contract. And I even offered them fucking money, you feel me? They didn't even sign me for that much. And I know they didn't spend that much because they didn't give me shit. Most they did was put me on the Raw Wave tour, but I went on that tour for like a week, and it ain't like I had my own Sprinter or something. Like I rode like with twenty people on a Sprinter. That shit was crazy, bro. Like we had motherfuckers laying on top of each other, bro. Like damn, that shit was crazy. <laughs> we had two artists in a Sprinter, and motherfucker had eighteen people in the entourage. I had I was riding with. 18 people I didn't know in my homeboy. <laughs> on tour. Who did you sleep in the bed with? Myself. <laughs> that, nigga caught, that nigga caught the couch for show. <laughs> that nigga caught the couch for show. You didn't do the heel to toe? Yeah, no. Couch in every room. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Yeah, so you say you're fully independent now, So, but do you got, like, a little team with that's working with you, or are you still just, like, fully by yourself? I'm fully by myself on some shit. I got my boy Grizz, Fat Guabo, be helping me out. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, bro, like, yeah, like, besides that, I don't got nobody. I've been at this shit by myself for, like, the last two years on some shit, like, everything. Yeah. Out of pocket. Just Man. the connections. Just doing this shit, you know? It's, yeah. just, it's just hard work, but God damn, we doing it. Yeah. Hey, shit. Fuck it. Yeah. First deal fucked you over. It's going to be, it's going to feel, it's going to feel better that once you. Oh, shit. shit, but fuck it. Hopefully we got some better shit coming, man. Yeah, because when, once that shit go up, it's going to, it's going to be feeling a lot different than making it from like a record deal, you know? That shit going to be crazy, bro. <laughs> they don't want to keep calling me. They, them fools really wanted to, to re-sign me towards the end, but all, you think I even answered? That shit's crazy. Yeah, no, nah, hell no. Nah. Hell no. So I, I want to know uh, what you got rocking with you right now. Are you uh, working on any projects, any EPs, albums, singles, videos, any features coming up? I got a huge catalog, bro. I got like 400, 500 plus songs, to be honest with you. I got a bunch on my computer. I got a bunch on my phone. Um, I've been working on my album for the last two years, to be honest. I've been putting out mixtapes, but I've been working on the, like the real project that I want to put out. For the last two years, I got songs that are like two, three years old on it. I got songs that are from last month on it. Uh, but I got some big features. Uh, Money Man, Sada Baby, uh, Zero, Money Sean Sway, RJ Mr. LA, and Slim Jimmy. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Youngest in Charge. But at the moment, I just haven't been, I haven't been putting it out. I haven't put it out. I've been holding it back because I want everything to be right as far as the marketing because I just know that this isn't something that I want to go on her, bro. Like, I feel like this shit could really, like, hit the charts. Like, every song, like, I'm telling you, I got 600 songs. I went and chose 18 of them. Um, there's not a single miss. I had a little event where I played the whole album. Crowd went crazy. Uh, and it wasn't even my event. The motherfuckers just let me play the, play my USB. Uh, <laughs> you feel me? That shit was dope. I appreciate it, man. Shout out High Class, man. Shout out Surf's Up. Um, so, yeah, bro. Hopefully, hopefully I get with the right people here soon enough, you know, that can push it out the right way. Because yeah. I know that at the end of the day, I don't know. I don't know if at the moment I could do it by myself. So, yeah, shit, I want, I, wanna, I want this shit to be right, bro. Yeah. I don't, 
much care about the money. I don't really care about none of that. I want to put my, I want to put my passion. I want to put what I love out there. You know, I want to change people's lives because that's just crazy to me that I have changed people's lives. So mm. that's all I want to do. I want people to appreciate. You know, learn. Mm. What's some uh, What's some advice? Because I, I have homies that are, you know trying to get into the rap industry and stuff like that, taking it a little bit more seriously now. Um, you know. Uh, putting out a, uh, more music uh, more often. Uh, what's some advice you would give to somebody who's like nervous or like hesitant to put out like their music, even though they like, say that they're like finished with it? Or if there's just like one little thing that they don't think sounds right to them, what's some advice you would like give them to like push them or force them to uh, release more music? Because I I find that's what um, it's kind of like lacking in a lot of artists because they can have good songs. It's just they don't got enough uh, in like their catalog that they have released for people to like want more, you know. Um. Wait. So. Uh. Honestly, bro. I feel like shit. Music. You can't really rush. I feel like they gotta. And even even you like we talking about like your homies and stuff, shit criticize, bro. Like, shit, not in a bad way. Don't tell them you know that, that shit's ass or yeah. whatever. But shit, whatever you you don't whatever you hear, bro. As a not in a bad way as a fan, you feel me? Because you feel me like at the end of the day we're trying to be fans of him. You know, like you got to sit down. Because I have people do that with me, like people intimate people. Like I have my girlfriend, like literally sit down. And just listen to me. I've had my little brother do the same thing. Like, you know, so he won't be biased or nothing. Like, I sit down and just read or rap over a beat and whatever they hear, they can tell me and fix it. But they got to feel it, bro. Like I told you, they got to feel it on some shit. Like, I don't know. I feel like they just got to be themselves and be, be confident. Be confident because they're doing music. It's the end of the day, they're doing it for themselves, and I, you know, I hope they're not doing it to, to prove a point to nobody or to try to be the richest in the world, because at the end of the day, music is an art, and music is beautiful. I know I've said that a lot <laughs> in this podcast, but uh, shit, it's a lot of beauty that comes with this, and it's beauty in the struggle, so pressure builds diamonds, and being scared builds courage, so. It's okay to be scared and put that motherfucker out. If that motherfucker banged and that motherfucker banged. And if they tell you something's wrong with it, just come back, hit them, with, hit them harder with the next one. Yeah, so shit. So like, so like, seek out that like criticism, like put push your shit and like, ask, shit. ask for like people's opinion instead of just putting it out on some shit. But at the same time, don't listen to them too hard. Don't listen to them too hard. Don't let people under your skin. Don't let people dictate you. Don't let people dictate your music or your emotions because that could fuck with your music. That could fuck yeah. with what you got going on. Yeah. It's a lot of work, bro. It's a lot of work because even, even as an upcoming artist, bro, you get a lot of hate. Yeah, for sure. You get a lot of hate. And everybody, everybody that do good got hated. But shit. But shit ain't easy, to be honest. But I believe in everybody, bro. I believe everybody got a purpose in this. So that's it. That's it. Uh I'm sure we could keep talking about a whole bunch of shit, but how long have we been recording? Almost an hour? Yeah, almost. Uh, well we uh we could wrap it up right here. If y'all want, we could do a part two. I'm sure this man's got more stories. He about to he about to, he about to pull up. We could probably talk more about just the street shit for a minute. Yeah, we can we, we you gotta bring me to the uh <laughs> to the street. Episode, yeah, yeah bring bring a in, street bring story episode. Well, I got a couple of them. Tales from the hood, <laughs> tales from the neighborhood. Yeah, uh, but let us know if y'all want to see them, uh, some shit like that, because we didn't really get into it like we normally would with all these like super gangsters, super crips, and stuff like that. But I'm sure, I'm sure we can get into it just as much. Um, but other than that, than that, bro, I appreciate you making the drive over here. You know, sitting in traffic and stuff like that. Um, it's always cool to have uh, artists come over and you know put me on game. You know, talk about stuff. Um, Cause I don't know. I, I think people have this impression that like I know who exactly who the fuck you are when I'm like interviewing you and stuff. Like I know everything about you. But um, uh, you know, I like being able to have genuine connections. So uh, 
I appreciate your vibe. I fuck with your vibe. You know, just doing it, uh, you know, for yourself, for what you want to do, and being you know, selfless, caring about other people and stuff like that. Um, I checked out your music. If y'all fuck with people like uh, Rod Wave or, like he said, J.D. Youngin, is that type of vibe, see, singing about love and stuff like that. Not too much of that murder shit, none of that, like, Cardi shit. It's different, different vibe and stuff like that. So if y'all want, uh, go check them out. If they want to check you out, what should they look up? Baby Youngin, man, on all platforms, B-A-B-Y-Y-U-N-G-I-N. You can Google me, man. I'll pop up on with a blue check on Instagram. Uh, I don't know about Twitter. I don't really use Twitter. But shit, y'all, can, y'all, y'all can find me anywhere, man. You feel me? Uh... Shout out Prodigy, man. Thank y'all for having me. Yes, sir. Yeah, make, sure, make sure y'all follow, comment on all this stuff. You know, uh, subscribe on his YouTube channel. Keep posted up with the videos and music and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, we're going to wrap it up right here. We Smart. got some hot shit coming, man. Yeah, get some charges <laughs> dropping this year, man. Yes, sir. Yes, no sir, delay. Yes, we're going to sign it out like that. It's another episode of the podcast with Prodigy. We out. It's the podcast, podcast, with a prodigy. It's the podcast, podcast, with a prodigy. It's the podcast, podcast, with a prodigy. It's the podcast, podcast, with a prodigy.